Hello again, Troy G. Door here with another beauteous video. Haha. <laughs> uh, first off, would just like to say I'm hoping that the quality of these will improve in the coming weeks because you know I'd like to have you know be able to show pictures and all that fun stuff. But currently, I suck at video editing, so. Hopefully we can get past that and I can start cranking out something a little bit better quality. Also, this is like a $5 microphone, so the audio is still not great either, but I want to keep talking to you guys. Today, I want to talk about the seven deadly sins a video game can commit. Um, these are seven things that when I see them in a game, I just ugh, kills me every single time. It's so irritating to see them. I was um, I was asked a question in the comments on my, uh, I believe my survival horror video about why Fallout is, makes me sad. And I said, Fallout just makes me sad. Everything about it, just sad. And it's my first deadly sin a video game can commit. Bland environments. Okay, there is absolutely nothing interesting about exploring the world of Fallout, except for going to see Washington, D.C. monuments in a video game. Because, I mean, we end up visiting a lot of foreign cities a lot of time, but a lot of times those are outside of the U.S. We don't get a lot of culture, or if they're in the U.S., they're not presented in a way that lets us explore them. Like Grand Theft Auto 4 did a wonderful job of sort of throwing New York out there and saying, hey, check it out. We, we put a lot of stuff in here. Um, but typically, you know, we'll be running through like uh, Paris in the Saboteur or something like that. But that can be fun. The problem is with Fallout is that it is absolutely brown and gray. 100% just those are the only things in there there's one living tree in the game and you kill that tree the only one ah i mean even their dlc which would have had the chance to take us out of that environment and put us somewhere else would have been a great opportunity to show us a new environment and yet here we are we go to pit and it's brown and gray. And we even go to an alien spaceship, and it's gray. Everything. Everything is gray. I swear to God, the game was... The, the team at Bethesda was just completely colorblind, the people that they had. Um, so by the time I got to New Vegas, and I walked out, and everything was brown again. And then now even the HUD was like a gross-looking yellow. Like, I was just... I was out. Like, I played it for about an hour, put it down, and said, no more, no more of this crap. So, I love the writing. The game had good writing. Not the main quest line, but some of the side stuff. But, um... And, and the gameplay was... Nah. Eh. I'd rather play... I'd rather play Oblivion or Skyrim. It's more pretty to look at, and the, and the gameplay is more fast-paced, engaging. Second deadly sin. We just did bland environments. Repetitive barking. Uh, for those of you who do not know what barking is, barking is when you uh, hear either an enemy or just an NPC say something, just kind of out of the blue. In Grand Theft Auto, you might be walking down the street and hear somebody go, hey, watch it, buddy, or oh man, I can't believe I got such a great deal at the store over there. Just like random, inane stuff. Um, Batman Arkham City actually got a lot of flack for this because um, how they kept referring to Catwoman. Oh, that bitch, I'm gonna get that bitch. Ah, rah, rah, rah. Like, all the things that you hear the enemies just say nonchalantly to themselves or when they see you, that's barking. Um, if it's repetitive... Um, a person with a decent memory, like I have, uh, just gets really sick of it really quickly. Um, this happens a lot with shooters. Uh, shooters tends to have like three different barks, like, Grenade! He's over here! And, Get him! Like, just, or in Spanish, Granada! Like, it's the same stuff over and over and over again. Like, we are in a war zone, 
clearly somebody's got something decent to say rather than just the same two words over and over again. So when you do repetitive barking, it pulls you out of the game because, like, ah, I've heard that one before. Um, still have yet to see a game that really gets barking right, but um, the Bioshock games tend to have... Uh, a little bit better barking simply because as you progress through the story um, the conversations change and Batman did a decent job of it um, as you move through as Batman but anytime you got into Catwoman it just got super repetitive it was okay um, third third deadly sin unintuitive controls this goes for any game that has a control schemata that just completely makes no sense. Um, I will say with confidence that a lot of the PS3 shooters that I have played, their default control scheme is to use L1 to aim and R1 to fire. Now, I know that the PS3 controller is a bit misshapen because your finger will actually slide off the back of the trigger, but the trigger feels like a gun's trigger, and it it puts you in the game there, and that's probably a poorer example of unintuitive control. If you want to see a really bad example, IGN just posted a video of a terrible game for iPhone called Kong, in which the D-pad is actually on the right side, and the jump button is on the left. So have fun playing things backwards than you're completely used to your entire lives. Unintuitive control, horrible. Um, also, uh, fighting games tend to do it pretty well. I've been playing Injustice. Uh, everything feels like it flows naturally, but sometimes the combos feel a little odd. Like, sometimes you have to roll backwards to shoot something forwards, or, uh, roll forwards to shoot something backward. Seems a little off, but that's just part of learning the game. Uh, still, though, it takes some adjustment, and because it's not natural and you have to think about it, uh, it's something that could have used a little bit of tweaking. Um, fourth, riding the art wagon. Uh, when I say riding the art wagon, I mean passing your game off as good because people think it's artsy-fartsy. Oh, wow, it looks so beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, my, such a great game. Show this one to Roger Ebert because he's so terrible good. No. 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 People love the game Limbo. That game is terrible. For reason number five, which I'm about to get to, Limbo is not a good game. Limbo is a terrible game with fun little black and white graphics, and oh, look at how stylish it is, and this totally makes it worth $15, even though it's just an hour and a half of really crappy platforming. No. No, bad. Actually, Limbo is a committer of three of my deadly sins for games, and it will keep coming up. Now, I haven't had the chance to play the unfinished Swan, but from what I've seen, it really likes to ride that art wagon. Uh, games like Child of Eden, um, which are very visually interesting, but ultimately aren't fun to play. A game can be good and artistic. Um, again, sadly, I have not had the chance to play this game, but the popular opinion is that Okami is a wonderful and beautiful game. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, another beautiful game, beautiful art direction, but it doesn't ride its art direction into greatness, okay? Because there's a good game underneath of that. Um, so yeah, you can't just pass your game off as art and have it be called a good game. And when people argue that a game is better because it's artsy, it really irritates me. Shadow of the Colossus, I'm looking at you, okay? Yes, 16 boss battles, really big enemies, cool stuff, but it's just a lot of 3D platforming and then find the weak point and stab it repeatedly. A lot of the bosses aren't even difficult, but the game gets by as being this wonderful example of art in games because it was visually impressive at the time. I don't think I don't think Shadow Colossus deserves its pedestal. I think it gameplay-wise needed 
more. Um, next on the list, trial and error gameplay. Hi, Limbo. How you doing? What's that? You died to something you couldn't see? Well, go back five feet and try again. Well, you died again. Try again. Try again. There are times when trial and error gameplay can be okay. Trial and error gameplay is okay when you are aware that you are walking into trial and error gameplay. That that is the purpose of the challenge. That is the focus. Super Meat Boy. Battle Block Theater. These games thrive on your death and then you trying to overcome that challenge. Super Meat Boy even has the replayable feature where once you've completed the game you can see yourself die a hundred times all at once. Look at all your failures before you succeeded. That's good trial and error gameplay. When you do it wrong is when you don't let me see my obstacles. Or you present me with an obstacle that I don't understand until I die and then force me to get past it. Or, in the case of the old Tom Clancy games like Splinter Cell, what's that? You didn't shoot off that light bulb and that stray ray of light hit your little toe and that guy saw you and because he saw you, you failed the mission because Sam Fisher can't shoot anyone in the face? No. Bad trial and error gameplay. Especially if the checkpoints are unforgiving. Urgh. Um, I think Demon's Souls is sort of in between. Dark Souls is a little bit easier of a game, so your trial and error gameplay, you kind of, you can sort of learn from your mistakes. Demon's Souls is absolutely punishing. I don't know if it's passable or not on that one. Sixth, short games. Limbo, I'm looking at you. Oh my gosh, short games. There is no game no game whose single-player campaign, if there is one, should be any less than four hours. Now, unfortunately, I had the recent um, joy of playing through Injustice and being a little bit disappointed with the length of the campaign, but they, they've got the prequel comic going, and I've been reading it, and so I don't feel cheated, but I could see that if somebody hadn't been reading the comic and just jumped right into the story mode of Injustice, they could feel a little deceived. But there's 240 Star Labs missions even without the Red Sun DLC pack, and there's all the battle modes. There's plenty of single player to be had, as opposed to, say, Warrior World for the GameCube, which you can beat in an hour and 45 minutes. Or Limbo, which gives you an achievement if you can beat it in under two hours and dying less than five times. The fact that you can release your game and say, this game is beatable in under two hours, is a shame. It is horrible. And unless your game is really good enough to warrant that full purchase, should not be allowed. Portal 2. I'm looking at you. Single player and co-op. Completely beasted on consoles in less than, I don't know, six hours. You can just right through it. Done deal. And if you've got it on the consoles, you didn't get any extra content for a really long time. So the PC crowd was happy because they were all making new levels, but you bought that game on consoles. I mean, just... To paint a picture, the game launched at $60, and two days later it was $40. Capture your early adopters' money, and then drop the price for everyone else. Asshole move, Valve. Finally, and this is the big one. This is the ultimate one. Seventh and greatest deadly sin of video games. Unoriginality. If your game is unoriginal, I don't want to play it. So, if you are going to give me Gears of War 1, I am okay with this. If you are going to give me Gears of War 2, you better come up with something better. Gears of War 2 was fundamentally the same with the addition of Horde Mode. Horde Mode can carry me through. Gears of War 3 added a little bit to its Horde Mode, but it didn't change the formula enough to warrant a third and then a fourth game. It's unoriginal. You didn't even change the weapons. You didn't change the characters. Everybody makes the same noises. It's recycled stuff. It's unoriginal. Or, if you are playing a space age or fantasy or sci-fi game or whatever 
like Gears of War, like Resistance, and you use standard weapons. I like Halo because Halo gives you variety. Sticky grenades, they did way back in the day. The Needler is one of the most interesting weapons I've ever had the pleasure of firing in a first-person shooter. The plasma pistol for taking down shields. Then you have your array of normal stuff. The sniper rifle, the assault rifle, the shotgun, the pistol. All right. If you just put all of those things in a sci-fi skin, it does not a new gun make. Okay, That's unoriginal. So I like what Resistance did when it gave me the repeater rifle from the fifth element, tag it, and then brrr, I can shoot around walls and stuff. That's cool. But the rest of the weapons were basically the same stuff I'd already seen. Um, likewise, I want to say Mortal Kombat games in general have been using the same characters with the same moves and the same fatalities for years and have been tweaking the battle engine. Add some new content. That's why I'm thrilled for Injustice. Because I love DC and I haven't played a fighting game in years short of Dead or Alive 4 and the game mechanics work, and the characters are all new and have new abilities. Even the ones who play similar to other Mortal Kombat characters like Batman does to Scorpion. The mechanics are fundamentally changed. They operate in different ways, so it is actually quite different than Mortal Kombat. This is a great example of a studio using originality to take something that they're good at and make it better or at least different. But if you are going to spout out at me the same crap over and over and over and over again, I don't want your stuff. Looking at you, Scribblenauts, what have you done? You don't possess a good challenge. It's just like, hey, summon another cop. Summon another ladder to reach that star. Now you got to put the cop on the ladder. Now you got to give the cop a wife. Now you got to kill his kid. It's all the same thing in every Scribblenauts game. You get new words and you get adjectives, but what are you really doing? You're still doing these goofy little puzzles, these goofy little drawings, and because it's charming, it's considered a good game. That one's riding the art wagon, and it's unoriginal. Again, this has been the Seven Deadly Sins of Gaming. If you have a sin that you would like to mention, put it in the comments below. Also, I think I'm going to start doing Let's Plays if you all want to see it. I've had a request to do Amnesia on a, let's, on a Let's Play. I have not played all the way through Amnesia, so it would be a good one to do. And bear in mind, I don't have a capture card, so this is going to have to be like a PC-only thing for a while, even though I primarily game on the Xbox. If you've got a suggestion for me on a video you would like to see, something you'd like me to talk about, anything, let me know. And, uh... Peace.